Hey, it's Suffering Student here, and today I'm going to be talking about class diagrams. And I will be using the tool Plant UML to create the UML, which I already created, and I will use the UML to actually create the program. So, first of all, I got four classes. I got an abstract class called Pet, which contains a private attribute name, which is a string, a private attribute owner name, which is a string as well, a get name method which is public, which returns the string. In this case, re case, returns the name of the animal, of the pet. Get owner name as well, returns the string. The owner name. I got an abstract method, because pet is abstract class, which is called make a sound, and it returns void. And we use curly parentheses and the keyword abstract, so it's abstract, and it is seen inside our UML diagram as italic. It might, it might not be too obvious, but it is. <laughs> so just go on with it. We have a class dog, which extends pet, but have it have its own um, ID, dog ID int. And we are told that we need to have a make a sound method. And it's abstract, so we need to override the make a sound method. And similarly with the cat, Got it own cat ID and make a sound. The IDs are not really that useful, or it might actually be be better to just create one ID that'd be like a pet ID, but it's just to have some different stuff inside our classes. But you could probably make a or you could definitely make an like a pet ID and just have, have that be extended as well. Then we have a pet system, which is a system. Let's look at the arrows first. So the system is associated to dog and cat, which means they know or can use the dog or the cat class. And we have a private attribute pets, which is an array list, which contains animal. And we have two methods. We have an add pet to system, which would add a pet to the system. And there's actually an error here. Because when we add a pet to the system, we would like to pass a parameter, which would be a pet. And we're using a polymorphism to actually add it as a pet, but we will actually be adding a dog or cat, because we only have the ability to actually access dog or cat. Then we have a get, get pet system information, which returns a void as well, and they will just print to the console the information of the pet system. So let's actually try creating it after we've been looking at the plant UML. So the plant UML is the tool and it's just written kind of similarly like over here. So we actually have like the abstract class. It's abstract and A minus for private plus for public. Go name string, owner name string and for the methods get name parentheses parentheses string and so on. And association is used arrows so for extender arrows we would use smaller than or larger than a line a line and then two dashes or we just use like a normal arrow for the normal arrows so let's actually try implementing some of it so that's like the purpose of the uml it's giving us a basic overview of how we would like to create the program before it's created it's like a, a blueprint you could say so we just start from the top, for example, and just create the pet class first. And as well, it's pretty easy now that we actually have all of the structure created already, so we can just create it and it shouldn't be too hard. So let's create a class. We look at the UML, it's called pet. So what does the pet have? We have two attributes, private name, private name, String, oops, private string name. We had a private owner name. Which is also a string. That's all we got. We actually don't show constructors inside up. UML because it's just showing the basic association between classes. We just input a constructor. 
we would create our methods, a get name, a get owner, owner name, we could just actually use the pre in build. So now we have an abstract method. So first we should make our class abstract. So public abstract class pet. And we would make the public abstract void make a sound abstract class. So that is our first class. Abstract class pet contains a name, private name string, private owner name string, some methods, and let's create a dog and a cat. Java class dog extends pet. And we need to implement a constructor. Make a sound. Oh, we need to add, like the abstract method and a constructor. So let's make a sound. Let's just print parking. I know it's not very creative, but it works. And we would like to let's have a look what else we need. So we need a dog int private. Int dog ID, which don't make too much sense by now. Let's just keep it simple, actually, and just just remove it for now because it don't add. It just adds another layer of complexity. Let's just keep it simple. So we just have a dog, and let's create the cat. Also extends pet. Implement the methods. Implement the constructor. And we would just print meowing. And now we would create our last class, which is the pet system class. So we just create a new Java class, pet system, and let's see what we need. We need a ray list, your private ray list containing pet called pets equals. There we go, and we would just have a look if we need anything else. Nope. Then we would create a constructor. And let's just have it create the array list instead of actually parsing in an array list. So just go pets equal new array list. Go. And we would create add pet to system. So we would do a public void add pet to system. And we will take in a pet. And we would just simply do pets dot add the pet. And we need to create a get pet system information. So we would do a public void get pet system. Let's see what we call it. Information. And we would like to just go through. each pet, pet inside pets. And for each pet, we would actually, let's have a look what we have to do. We could get the name and we can get the owner name and we can make a sound. So let's do that. So let's do first, go pet dot get name. Let's see what it actually does. So the get name returns string 
get owner name returns a string and the maker sound actually does make the sound. So we would need to do print something and then we would do pet name. And then we would do owner name. So now we just print the, the pet name and the owner name on one line and then we would do let's just call the mega sound. So first of all we just get the pet name, the owner name and the dog animal would make a sound. That seems pretty good to me. So now we created the basics, we created all the classes and we created all they contain. So let's actually make sure it works. That's also always the most interesting part. So I would just create a new class. I'll just create a main class. Where I will create a public static void main. We could probably add this to our UML as well. But for now, let's just make sure it works. So we would create a new dog and a new cat first. So we would do a dog, dog equals new dog. And we would need to give it a name. Just call, call him a... Hans, and the owner name would be Daniel. And create a new cat. Cat equals new cat. And we would call the cat um, Bella. And we would call the owner Lily. So now we'll create a new pet system. Then we would add a dog and a cat to our pet system. So we would do pet system dot add pet to system dog. Dog, we're not adding, adding, we're adding the specific object. And let's add the cat as well. And then we would dot just call a pet system dot get pet system information. Let's see if it all works, or if I made a mistake. Well, there we go. Pet name, Hans, owner name, Daniel. We've got the barking of the dog. And we have the pet name, Beller, owner name, Lily, and the meowing of the cat. So this was just a basic demonstration of creating a very simple program based on a UML document. So the UML, create the classes, and that's it. So if you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.